Hey guys, Jennifer here. I wanted to take a moment and show you guys some of the organization and otherwise things that we've gotten so far. Um, over the years when camping, we've kind of learned some things that you need, some things you don't need. One of the things that I've always found in camping, especially when you're going to be staying for an extended period of time, you always need organization. Because if you're not organized, you're going to be losing your stuff, not know where anything is. And especially in a tight quartered area like a camper or an RV, you need organization. So let's go through and see some of the things that we have done updates and things we've added to stay organized. Here we go. Go for it. Hey guys, this is Jennifer. I wanted to kind of update you guys on some of the storage that we're doing here in the camper. So up here, we're planning on doing dry goods and uh, other sorts of things. Um, so this is a really nice seven piece set that we found on Amazon. Um, there are, I think, let's see, one, two, three, four different sizes. We have just one of the tall, um, spaghetti type containers we have um two of the taller ones two shorter ones and then two of the shortest here which are probably like little snack containers these are airtight um they do have a really nice seal on them i feel like this is a must have when you're camping because as I've read and as we've experienced, you run into all kinds of things. Typically a camper does tend to stay a little bit more moist inside. Um, a camper also tends to have bugs whenever you're out, especially boondocking and places like the beach. There are lots of ants and something that's airtight like this will keep your food protected. The other thing that we're also gonna do in our storage area show you guys the box that this came in um, this is a seven piece set from chef's path food storage container set again these are really nice because they also came with a free spoon set here to help measure out your um, ingredients you also have the nice chalkboard labels even though it is a clear package having the cutesy little chalkboard labels will make things look a little fancier and then they also came with the marker here to be able to write on the chalkboard labels. All right, the other thing that we have picked up is a nice little metal container. This is a Better Homes and Gardens laundry caddy. This right here is gonna be nice because when we're living on the trail for two months, about two months straight, we're gonna to need to do laundry and trying to do laundry myself with two young children, it's gonna be nice to have this to be able to carry all of my laundry supplies in it to the different various laundry mats that we will be traveling to. Hi guys, it's me, Abigail from Trail Me Away. And um, right now I'm going to be showing you some organization down here. So first we have a gray basket that we have purchased from Dollar Tree. We also have these puzzles that we also purchased from Dollar Tree. We have nice little puzzles that we can do, like 500 piece. Uh, we have Disney, five pieces, 48 pieces. Nice little puzzles to do on our board. And so we have these gray baskets here. Mm -hmm. So we, they come in a three set. So these are mainstays paper yes. rope baskets. We chose the gray color just because we kind of like a neutral tone. Yes. Three They're piece nice and we and actually simple. purchased yeah, we purchased two sets of those to be able to go all the way Some across. Some of the other basket we have four. Mm -hmm. okay. And what are those going to be storing, Abigail? They are going to be storing snacks and games. Mostly snacks. Okay. So okay. also, if you come back here, we have some the baskets back here as you know we have nice little storage baskets here so these larger baskets will probably hold like pasta pasta or um whatever we need to kind of keep from being disorganized yep okay let's go hey guys so another must have for camper um so in our cabinet you will find um you'll find the paper plates but something that we try to be very cognizant of is using this, using the paper plates when we need it, but also making sure that you find a good sturdy 
plate set. Um, so this right here is actually a Corel. Corel makes excellent plates from everything that we found. These are actually made in the USA, which is another bonus. Um, this particular plate set, um, Santa brought to us, but they can be found at Walmart as we have later found. This particular plate set came, uh, it was a five piece set, so five place settings. We have the five big plates. We also have the five Corel bowls. And they also came with nice lids that we can close it up and seal it up if we have meals that are a little bit bigger and we want to save some leftovers. And then it also came with five coffee mugs. So nice set. Um, I've seen some people use um, plastic containers like the thick durable plastic that you can wash and reuse. But from what we've seen from Corel, they're pretty much, unless you're like Hulk smashing it, you're going to be good to go. All right. All right, guys, so another must-have, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure Will agrees with me on this one, um, is a good cabinet um, liner. So this particular liner, liner that we used is Pioneer Woman Pattern from Walmart. Love Ree Drummond. Shout out to her. Um, so we went with just a nice clean pattern, added a little pop of color. The really nice thing about this particular drawer liner is it does have a rubbery type feel to it. Um, and then it has a nice webbed type backing to help um, things not slide around as much. And the nice thing about this is it is um, non-adhesive. So whenever you put it in your cabinet, you don't have to commit to just one that, that one pattern. If this were to get messed up, cut, whatever, with some of the stuff you're storing, you can change it out for something new. So I just want to kind of show you guys. Um, so what the idea behind a liner is basically you fit it to your actual cabinet size. Um, and just to kind of show you what can happen if you don't, our previous owners of the camper failed to do that and we have a lot of scarring and a lot of things that can happen. So whenever you put that drawer liner in there, cabinet liner, it protects that wood and um, provides more longevity for All your All right guys, camper. another thing that I really wanted to um, incorporate into our camper organization is a couple of baskets. Um, this particular basket is a um, a seagrass ba oh, excuse me, seagrass basket with wooden handles. This is mainstay, so it's Walmart. Um, but I like the idea of this because we can keep our napkins. Um, I do like a candle every now and then, but this makes for easy, um, quick, um, I guess, unpacking. Um, and it also makes for easy kind of storage because you can put all your things in here, set it on the seat or on the floor during travel, and it is a quick and easy way to have um, your things organized and not all over the place when you finally get to your new destination. So you can like put salt, pepper, exactly. candles. Yep, so they don't utensils. roll away because that's very important. All right, guys, so another must-have is a good dish drainer because most of your campers do not come with a good dish drainer. So this particular dish drainer is nice because you see that it has a nice um, sleek design, but when you're ready to wash dishes, you push it out and you have a full-size dish drainer. This dish drainer is also nice because it has a little slot so you can stand your spoons, forks, and knives up to dry. And it also has these perforated areas um, so you can stand cups, plates, whatever, and let them dry. And then when you're ready to pack it up, you just squish it back flat again thanks to that nice rubber edge. And you can put it back in your sink. And I believe this is, we've had this for a few years. This we actually got with our first camper. Um, but I'm sure you could probably find it Walmart, Amazon. Just search collapsible dish drainer. All right. So wanted to sit down and do a quick video with Will. Um, it was up past his bedtime. We're both up past our bedtimes. But here you go. All for the sake of YouTube. So um, to talk I'm about. for you. Please don't be awkward. <laughs> so we are going to do a couple of, I guess, ideas for if you are thinking about getting a camper, um, some things to consider and some things to consider if you've already gotten your camper and you're getting it ready from what, just previous experience. So first and foremost, um, I would say know your camper wants and needs. Um, Kind of go into it do your research um look on rv trader look on all these other you know all the websites that are out there 
and even the manufacturer websites will give you ideas for what you want and what you need. Um, with that in mind, make sure that you keep your budget in mind um, with your camper. So do you want to say anything about that? Um, just in regard to you are talking about the information, you can look up the specs. I think it's like RV USA or something like that. There's uh, basically just run a search for whatever camper you're interested in and you can probably find all of the specs uh, that you want for the camper. And, uh, you know... <laughs> can you grab him, please? <laughs> cat yoga. He, he thinks he's a parrot. Anyways. Something like that. Um, <clears throat> and another thing with your camper... Um, look around because something that I have noticed in our first camper we purchased we bought a brand new off the lot um, we bought from South Carolina from an un, I'm going to say unnamed company um, and we <laughs> we quickly learned that um, they were not a good company to work with um, brand new camper off the lot immediately had issues with the slide um, leaking yeah it wasn't completely brand new but it was it was like somebody had gotten it used it one season and then took it back so it was almost brand new and we and paid it we paid a brand new price for it I can tell you that the, so. uh, the, the slide um, roof like basically the membrane came loose and so it was just kind of you know the water was just coming in so if you if you buy from somewhere um, either plan on dealing with the problems yourself or if it's still under warrant maybe just go somewhere local like and if you're not very mechanically minded and you don't know a lot about campers find a friend find i know um here recently on facebook um we've been able to find a group um that just particularly deals with our area in camping um, and I, you know, constantly I'm seeing people post, you know, I'm thinking about getting this camper, what should I know? Or I'm thinking about dealing with this company, what should I know? Reach out and find someone who knows something if you are looking, um, looking into buying one. Because they can a lot of times give you some insight that you might not, you won't, you won't have to travel down the road that we did with our first camper. So. There's some pretty good RV uh, videos out there too. Um, I think it's channels like A... A Z experts or A to Z experts, something like that. Um, he's got a lot of great uh, camper repair videos, and there's others out there as well. Um, so I would highly recommend that as well. But mm -hmm. having that mechanical inclination helps a lot. Like if you're scared to take stuff apart and, and fix it, uh, yeah. campers can be really scary. Yeah. And another thing to consider um, when you are looking at a camper is what kind of camping do you want to do? Do you want to do the full-on glamping where you have um, electricity, water, and sewer? Do you want to do um, boondocking where you are you know, solely relying on your battery power? Um, you really need to think about what kind of camping you really want to do. So, And unfortunately, sometimes you have to go out and try different things to see what you actually like absolutely so maybe don't get a huge amount of money tied up in a camper um <clears throat> so that you can change if you want to later on absolutely um so another thing so now that you've got your camper say you've got your camper and you are you know what do i do now <laughs> um so the biggest thing again have one more thought okay because you were talking about the buying thing earlier mm -hmm. um, if you're going to buy a camper the time for you to buy the camper is fall into the season early yeah. winter yeah the end of the season because people like the uh, folks that we bought our camper from mm -hmm. they get in at the end of the season for whatever reason they're like you're not doing that again and they're ready to get rid of that camper uh spring and really late winter i think anywhere probably starting late january mm -hmm. people are starting to think what am i going to do this summer and especially and, yeah especially right now with coronavirus kind of running rampant um people are you know branching out and doing that now that's you um you know absolutely go for it but just keep in mind again that budget if you're going to spend that money make sure that you're willing to 
possibly take a loss when you're getting ready to sell it. And uh, check the uh, check whatever sources you're using, RV Trader, Craigslist, uh, Facebook, uh, Marketplace, any of those things. Check them a lot because the way we came into our camper was Jennifer was on there and looking and we happened to catch one just minutes, hours after it came available and we were the first ones to get in line. We also found that we wanted a separate area for our children because when you are camping in close proximity, especially if you're doing a long-term camp, you want somewhere that you can kind of, hey, go play on a rainy day. You have to think about things like that because it's going to rain. You're going to have storms. You're going to have, you know, days where you cannot get out and do things and you're going to need a place for your children, your pets, wherever to go. Um, so, um, we ended up finding a quad bunk, which you guys have hopefully already seen. Um, and, you know, just, just have that list when you are shopping and don't settle. Shop around. Something, and I think I was going for this earlier and I forgot. Um, different states tend to have different things. Um, we found the camper that we liked in New York. Um, so, you know, you, you have to be able to kind of, I guess, shop around like we have been saying. So... Yep, and uh, be ready to move when you find the right one. Um, and if you're watching prices and stuff, if something sat on there and sat on there and sat on there for months, the price probably isn't right. And honestly, the people that are selling it probably aren't willing to negotiate a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And if you see something where it's up there for a few hours and then it's taken down, uh, that was probably a good deal. And if you didn't move on it quickly, you missed it. Wah, wah, wah. We had that happen a lot. Too. Oh yes, oh yes. You are ready to figure out what to do next. Um, the biggest thing that I will say is first of all, again, think about what kind of camping you're going to be doing. Because if you're going to be boondocking, you're going to want battery powered fans if you're camping in the summer in a hot location. You're going to want um, like a battery powered light for the bathroom. You're going to want things like that, that you can have battery powered rechargeable. Um, so if you're boondocking, you can still have those creature comforts without having to, you know, basically be living in a metal tent. So, yeah. um, your RV systems are your uh, water pump, uh, I think even the uh, refrigerator, the electronic component of it won't work if you don't have battery power. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep your batteries charged, whether it's through solar panels or through a generator. All right, another thing to consider um, when you are buying things for your camper, your organization, your dishes, your, you know, all those little things that go into your camper, um, it may seem like a good idea to go to Dollar Tree and buy everything. I have nothing against Dollar Tree. I've shopped there. But you have to think about the longevity of that item. Are you going to go and spend $100 at Dollar Tree to organize your camper, all to, you know, have to throw it all away at the end of the season? Are you going to buy something that's going to hold up, maybe a little, you know, may cost more, but it's going to last you for multiple camping seasons? Um, and that's something that we have found too. You know, I, I have Dollar Tree, you know, organization things in my camper right now. My children's closet have, a, you know, a little basket in it, and we have other organizing items in there. Um, but just keep in mind, if that's going to, if you know, if that item, if that, you know, food storage is going to be used a lot, you may want to buy something that's going to cost a little more that's a little bit more durable. Um, if you're shopping on Amazon or shopping on Walmart, read the reviews, um, of those items that you're considering putting in your camper. See what other that in have mind, to say. That kind of segues into our next topic. Be prepared. Um, know what your budget is and factor in all those things. If you're going to go and buy a brand new camper, unless you have the cash to pay out right, know that you're going to have a payment even in those months that you're not camping. Um, keep in mind that you'll have to have insurance. You'll have to have tags on your RV, especially if you have a travel trailer or a, um, what is that, Class C that you drive. You'll have to have tags regardless. So there's a fee with that. Um, you have upkeep. As far as, you know, you're, you're going to need to wash your camper. You're going to need to put tires on your camper from time to time. You're going to need to do all those things just like you would a vehicle. Um, you have to, you know, again, get those supplies for your camper to make it ready. Unless, you, like he said, you inherit, a, you know, a fully stocked camper. Um, you're going to have the fees from the campgrounds. 
um, you're going to have either a payment, like I said, a, you know, a camper payment, or you're going to have an out-of-pocket cost if you've saved up for a camper and now you're ready to buy. Um, gas mileage is another thing. Oh, yeah. If you're a gas mileage watcher and you're hauling your rig, just realize that that pretty number that you see when it's not connected <laughs> is going to go way on down when you connect that travel trailer. And you just, as I learned, you just have to not worry about it. You can drive a little bit slower and maybe save yourself half a mile per gallon and take, you know, longer to get there. Uh, just drive it as fast as it's safe to drive it and uh, you'll just realize you'll make up, especially the way campgrounds have gotten uh, this, this year. Uh, you'll make up the difference in the gas cost in the first night, maybe two nights. Oh, remember that camping can feel like work. <laughs> you may think, oh, we're going to have a camper and we're going to go have a vacation and we're going to check in and we're done. Not so. Yeah, so all that money saving you do by uh, feeding yourself and, uh, you know, making your own bed and all that stuff, that's work you're going to have to do during the day. And, uh, you know, it's, and then sometimes there are extra things that come along, maybe something breaks or you know, whatever issues you have to deal with. So there's all that stuff that can pop up and, uh, you know, change your trip a little bit. Now, uh, for us, I think that the camper is allowing us to maybe go and vacation more than we could if we had to pay for a hotel. So I don't mind doing a little bit of extra work there. And also the, the camper enables us to go some places uh, that we couldn't get a hotel at. So some of the very uh, remote and kind mm -hmm. of backcountry locations, yeah. there's just not a hotel there. So there, there's a lot of advantages to it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to check for bed bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you're not paying the exorbitant hotel rates, which is uh, really one of the things that'll turn you off to, to stay in a hotel because we, uh, we can stay basically a month at a campground for mm -hmm. what a week at a hotel cost or, or, or maybe cabin, longer. Yeah, yeah, cabin yeah. stay. Um, so we've talked about some of the negatives. We mm -hmm. talked about, you know, bum bum, you know, whatever, don't do. Let's talk about the positives for a second. The positives of camping, again, coronavirus is happening right now. Um, other than having to, you know, be the person checking in, there's going to be no interaction with others. I'm not going to be in close proximity, worried about did they clean this room properly before I checked in. Um, I'm going to be able to control how much, I guess, access to germs that I'm going to have. Camping is also very relaxing because the great thing is when you're outdoors, you actually get to, you know, you don't have neighbors that you have to worry about playing music well, I guess. Some campgrounds you hear music, whatever. But when you're, you know, when you're boondocking, when you're out, you know, out away from others, um, you actually get to con connect with nature and just kind of have quiet time. I know a lot of people in, you know, big cities and stuff, when it's silence, it's like, you know, you know, it's, you have to have something, get, you know, a phone in your hand or technology or something like that. Um, with camping, I found that it's very nice to just put everything down and just breathe and enjoy what God has created. And so that to me is a big plus for camping and being able to um, just kind of have my own space and do what I want to do when I want to do it. So Yes. I like to seek out areas where self-service is not available, <laughs> which is getting hard to do that these days. Mm -hmm. but that's there. Hey guys, we wanted to say that we have come up with a name for y'all, all you followers of the Trail Me Away family. So from now on, you are going to be the TMA fam. So TMA fam, catch us next time as we make the decision to replace that ugly awning. Join us next time. And, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, see you on the trail. Bye! Bye.